This week on Rugged Expeditions, Jay Allen Smith is headed back to his old ranch in eastern Montana to get up close and personal with some huge whitetail bucks. The youngsters can't stand this. I love this rattling out here. You gotta get Mr. Big though to come in too at the same time. They say you can never go home once you leave it, but Alan's hoping they're wrong. Presented by the Pepe Family's Jonas Brothers Studios of New York. Memories come flooding back as I drive the lonesome gravel roads and watch the river meandering through the cottonwoods, bringing water to this parched, rough land. The crops may be different than they used to be, but the sagebrush and the rocky bluffs still watch like sentinels as we pass by them. This is cattle country. Vast tracts of grassland support a thriving beef business, and with cattle prices staying above historical levels, the ranchers here are enjoying good times right now in a typically cyclical business. Cattle seem to get into your blood, and you have to want to be in the biz because it's a tough way to make a living. Do I miss the place? You bet. I had the opportunity to spend a lot of years exploring every corner of this sacred land. I remember finding canyons I'd never seen before and wondering what wildlife treasures they might hold when hunting season finally came along. Besides tons of whitetail, you see a lot of mule deer in this area. I don't know anywhere else in North America where you see both species of deer so mixed in with each other. Boy, this place is just memory after memory. Right here in this bench right here is where Mac Paget took that beautiful mule deer well, that's quite a few years ago now, but it was right in here, and we'd been down in here whitetail hunting, and we came up over the top of the ridge, and here was this beautiful big mule deer standing all by himself out looking for does, and what a great memory that was, a fantastic day. But I gotta tell you, it was a lot warmer than it is right now. Woo! What super habitat these cottonwoods are for whitetails, and also mule deer will come down in here also. They'll come down here, get out of the weather, you know, get out of the wind especially. You get up on these benches like this and this cold weather goes right through you. Montana, nicknamed Big Sky Country, is known for its diverse terrain and wide open spaces. This region is also home to many distinct animals from the small prairie dogs peeking out of their burrows, to flocks of turkeys roaming the dry brush, and even herds of pronghorn can be seen migrating across the plains. Eastern Montana is a wildlife mecca, but most hunters look to Montana for their huge population of whitetails and mule deer. Jay Allen Smith knows this area very well, as he's taken both species here before, and it's these fond memories that have brought him back. I remember this old place. Sits down in one corner of the farm and this is the only haunted house I've ever actually been around. And some of you may think, okay, yeah, it's haunted. But I'm telling you, there was a lady that lived here that died, ended up, they never found her. And the rumor was around the neighborhood that she actually still lived here as a ghost. So, of course, I didn't believe it because I don't believe in that kind of stuff. Till I actually saw a black cat here that was living here. So since it was a feral cat, of course, I shot it. I came back the next day and the cat was up on the roof walking around. So I shot it again. That was the last time I ever came down and went in this house because I was sure, and I am sure to this very day, that that cat is not killable, even in the broad daylight. This place is creepy, but it's one of those memories that, you know, you remember from being here years ago. I always like to stay away from it. I've only come this close to it, actually, just because to put it on TV. There ain't no way 
I would go in there. Hello? Anybody home? Yeah, this place creeps me out. At least I don't see that cat around anymore, though. That's good. Ah, the memories. They just come flooding back when you get back to the old place. This is gonna be exciting this morning. Right at dawn here, we're gonna go down into the cottonwoods and we're gonna do something that I don't think you can do in very many places in America when it comes to white-tailed deer hunting. We're gonna try and spot the stock, try and sneak through the timber and see if we can't waylay one of these big monsters. So today, it's me against the whitetails. We're gonna go down where they're living and try and see if we can't get one and not bust out the whole field while we're at it. We all know how smart whitetail are, and your typical whitetail is not gonna let you just wander down the road and take a shot at them. But you start rattling, and they are coming in to check it out and see what's going on. The youngsters can't stand this. They love, they love this rattling out here. We gotta get Mr. Big though to come in too at the same time. We've got three different ones coming in, but I think these big ones are in this other patch over here. These are all coming across this opening and I think we gotta swing around and get back in here. Leave these youngsters out here. It's nice to see though that they want to come in to this rattling. Some places it works, some places it doesn't, but it's definitely working with these guys. This could really help us in trying to close the gap in this wide open area with some of these bigger ones that we're just not gonna be able to sneak in on. This is awesome. Let's go. The lay of the land makes it so that you can sneak along the dikes, you can get behind the trees, you can ease along as long as you've got the wind in your favor, and you can get a good look at these deer. And if you see a good one, now you can either use the train to your favor, sneak in closer, get a good look at them, judge them. If a guy can sneak along a cottonwoods and then just ease up about every 50 to 75 yards and see what's going on on the other side, the deer have no idea you're down there. And it seems like even if they see a little bit of motion, the bucks especially are so heavy in rut that they don't even give you a second look at this time of year. He does want to fight. Look at him. Hey, Toto. Huh. Huh. 
We're gonna call this one Tommy, because he's obviously deaf, dumb, and blind. Wow, what a warning. Montana has distinguished itself as one of the most mountainous states in the country. The name comes from the Spanish word montaña. And it's here J. Allen Smith has chosen to hunt for huge whitetails. That's not a bad one. We've seen a bunch of deer down below here. I'm gonna head down and see if I can get in on them. And we'll try a little rattling, try a little sneaking up. It seems like different times of the day, different techniques are working. We'll go in here and see what, how it looks. But there's some prime deer down here now. You hear a lot about the Milk River and several of the other classic spots where people go whitetail hunting in Montana. And the Powder River itself is probably more famous for the mule deer that live in the hills above here, but it really is a honey hole along the Powder River for great whitetails. And it's definitely getting cold here. You can see the, the Powder Rivers. Looks like it's something out of the Arctic Ocean right now. We got ice flowing through here. The banks are all frozen up. When it gets cold in eastern Montana, that's when these whitetails go into full-fledged rut. This trail is a classic one that's leading off of the river and they'll come up into these fields back here. Sometimes it's just the grass fields. They're not necessarily always going into the alfalfa. There's a little bit of green growing underneath. A lot of this, what looks like it's just dry. You can see there's a little bit of green in here and that's what they're feeding on. After passing up several nice deer in Montana, J. Allen Smith has finally spotted a huge buck in the distance. He's coming out good. This deer that we saw earlier, he went down over the bank but now he's come back out with the doe and she's leading him out this way. And there's a couple other does over here. So I'm hoping that he's gonna bring, that she's gonna bring him right across to where they're at. I don't know how we're gonna, it's so open here. I don't know how we're gonna get a, a crack at him, but we've got this ditch we can use to keep following it down. We came all the way from up there through this thing. It keeps us low enough it's going to be a long poke one way or the other, but we don't have any choice, so. He's still coming across, but he's 400 plus. I gotta get him closer somehow. I wonder if I can get him to come to me. That rattling's been working pretty good. I don't know if you'll be able to hear us, but it's worth a try. I can get him to come this way straight across. It'd be sweet. He's not even looking. He's so intent on that doe. Let's go with this. There's a hay bale over here. I think if I get over there, his angle that he's coming will cut him off. I'm just afraid that if we don't get over there, he's gonna disappear again into that brush and then we won't see him.
When I climbed up on top of them, it gave me a clear shot of the deer, took the sagebrush out of the way and the grass that was between me and them. It was perfect. Got too much brush in the way. Okay, just come to a stop there, baby. What a stud. This thing is a monster. Oh, to see him come out of that brush like that and then work his way across, because where he first came out, he was too far away. There was no way to get a shot. But then when he worked his way across that opening and through those cottonwoods, then he was too low and I couldn't get a shot even from up here in this hay bale. But finally, when he came up into that open area, And the sunshine was right on. It was like God was saying, da 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 da, showtime. Let's go see what this thing looks like. Okay, I said it's the biggest white tail I've ever seen alive. And it's just been confirmed at a distance. This thing is a toad. Look at the mass. On all these trips through the years, whitetail hunting and looking at different bucks and thinking you've seen a big buck and you'll probably never shoot a bigger one in your life. And then there he is. Look at this deer. The kind of buck dreams are made of right there. And I will take a character buck like this all day long over some of those other ones we saw. And not only that, but check this out. He's got a big brow tine here. He's got a split brow tine here. He's got another little knob. He's got another knob right here. And then he's got another horn growing right out of the middle of his head. I mean, he's like a unicorn, only with a couple extra horns to go with it. And then this side is, you know, semi-typical, if you can call that typical. But look at this. Oh, and the, look at the bases. I mean, he's just incredible. There was no ground shrinkage today on Rugged Expeditions, I can tell you that. What a deer, huh? Look at this. Holy smokes. 